Hey everybody, welcome to our wheel life. We are a physically challenged couple. One of us in a wheelchair, if you can't see it, <laughs> this guy. We share our tips and unique perspective on living life without limits. What do you say as this is our very first episode? I would be more apt to say that we are mentally <laughs> deficient. Challenged. Uh, there's no challenge. I just surrender to my mental deficiency. <laughs> so you're going to go with physical and mental? And other. Oh, my gosh. So all boxes. Check all boxes. Check all the boxes. Um, I, I like the AOA box. All of above. That's mine. Okay, you guys, this is our pilot episode. We are just checking to see how audio and video goes. Um, so if you hear dogs barking or echoes or anything like that, we are trying to iron that out. That means Tanya farted. <laughs> Stop it. People do not want to hear that. Are you sure? Nobody likes that, except for guys. Guys seem to think it's funny. Farts are funny. <laughs> Enough of that. Today we thought we would cover something different than we're going to typically cover on this podcast. We are going to cover some election stuff because tomorrow is the election. And it's been, you know, all over the news and everybody's going crazy. And we just wanted to share some of our background because we have kind of a unique background in politics as well. When was the, okay, to first tell them you, Something about your college education, because you have a poli sci like minor, right? I did. I majored in criminal justice, minored in poli sci, and then went to law school. So you've always been interested in politics? Yeah. Somewhat. I mean, yeah. you had to pick a minor, so you had to be somewhat. Uh, well, I sort of. Um, interested but it's a it's it's more the fact that politics is in every darn facet of of life you know figure your local politics and the local drama that happens at your work i mean it's always there so i that's why i got the poli side but also i would say you have a bigger interest really in government you like I government do. you like history i do so. i I had a uh, bit of a conundrum choosing between law school and or getting a, an MPA. Uh, I certainly did not want an MBA. I don't like math. I don't like numbers. But but, uh, but after you were a criminal justice major before correct. your accident, then you went to law school. Yes. In the wheelchair. Just want to kind of yeah. cover that for any new people. Well, you want to be completely accurate. I didn't even finish my degree before I got before I went into law enforcement. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I was like a, I was a, a year short. Yeah. And then Bakersfield State. Okay. And then you went to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And I got hurt. And I said, <laughs> I had to fix that. I did. So he, yeah, he pulled up his bridges, went to law school in the snow. <laughs> But it's hard to do when you're in a wheelchair. I'm just saying that. It's not easy to do that and go across the country. and Pulled up my bridges? <laughs> it's a wheelchair thing. You're always asking to get your bridges pulled up. So that's why I kind of use that, that analogy. That analogy. The world. <laughs> you said it in a recent video. You said, can you pull up my and so, like, right in the middle of the video. Yeah, that's a one-off. <laughs> well, now. Now, apparently, it's routine. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to show you a little background when we got ourselves involved in politics back in 2016, which, you know, that was the first year when... Um, go, Ben, go! Yeah, back in... We were in politics and trying to get Ben Carson to run for president. Um, so we were involved first in a super PAC called Run Ben Run, 
Um, and then we, I became part of his official campaign when the primaries of 2016. So and, I'm going to show you some pictures. And you, you heard what Ben said. What? That you were cool? No, that he was not going to run until I asked him. <laughs> Is that how it went? It was. Okay. Dr. Carson is one of the smartest people I ever met. He was born in September. You know that? Yes, you guys have a birthday a day apart. We yep. know that well. And we both agree that the smartest people in the world were born in September. Well, I'm glad you guys agree on that. Here we go. I'm going to share the screen so you guys can see pictures of our campaigning for Dr. Ben Carson in 2016 in the primaries. Okay. So as you can see here, there I am with Dr. Carson. This was actually, we were um, in an event, Beverly Hills, California fundraiser. First time I met him, I believe that was the first time I met him. I met him in Detroit. And anyway, those of you that don't know anything about him, he is a neurosurgeon. He's the first one to separate conjoined twins. And he's a um, Republican and super smart guy i mean you can't get any smarter a float we did for where we were in bakersfield for what was it veterans or memorial or something it was a parade i don't remember i don't remember what the holiday was there's your truck yep <laughs> that's the baddest truck in the world look at that cut out of ben carson back there it's pretty funny sweet ride there's some my daughter and her buddies, some friends and their Ice kids. Cream. Aren't they cute? Yeah. My friend Fatima's boys and the kids. Anyway, here's a new campaign event. There's you and Brian, one of yep. our volunteers. Where did we go? What restaurant was that? The pizza place. Mm. That's now um, the one at the mouth of the canyon. Remember? Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. It was something back then. Me and my bestie, Fatima, campaigning. The daughter and her friend. Signs we put up. There's our merch. We got boxes sent to us that we could hand out to people. This is Derek working the booth at the Republican something where. Was it Kern County Fair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kern County Fair booth. Doing his civic duty. Look at him. Good Lord, handsome, that man's skinny. Handsome dude. So was I back then. Let's see, these are all, okay. This is when he announced that he would run for president because we were all um, getting trying to get him to after the national prayer breakfast speech. That was Detroit. This is in Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. So he announced he would run in the primaries. So this is. That event, I was at it with my daughter. Lots of people were there. Friends. There we are. This is the one I was trying to get to. When Derek, for his birthday, we went to San Fran and he got I got I got I contacted the campaign yep. and I surprised him and I asked if we could go to the event. And Derek had no idea. And the campaign said, come on, let's go. So Derek, for his birthday, he we went to this special event in San Francisco, and he got to meet Dr. Carson. Hard to believe that was my 30th birthday. Oh, right. What? Yeah. What? Anyway, look at how handsome he looks. It's funny because that's a copy of a copy. The picture. Of the photo. It almost, the way it looks, Poor Dr. Carson almost is like a cardboard cutout there. But, <laughs> He's not. Right. But there's more. Here's one. Yeah. Are you guys talking? That was the friend. I don't know. I forget whose apartment this was. But it was downtown San Francisco. And if you went in around there to the living room, you could her view, that lady's view of downtown San Francisco and the bay was absolutely stellar yeah it was cool there he is talking yep. it was a very small private event very, very private and that's why I, yeah it was so amazing that they invited well yeah that they said sure come to the event 
they, they would love to meet Derek. So that's how down to earth Dr. Carson is. He's very cool. He's quite possibly the kindest man, smartest man that I've ever had the good fortune of uh, running into on this earth. And look at his wife, Candy. She's they have sweetheart. such a good story from going from the hood. Rags to riches. Rags to riches to being one of the most famous neurosurgeons he is. And then his wife's an author and they have a nonprofit that's amazing too. And she is an accomplished classical violinist. Oh, yeah. She's a violinist as well. My goodness. Yeah. They're impressive. Very impressive. There he is talking to Candy. You know what I noticed about these pictures? Uh, that because of the humidity in San Francisco at the time, that the button on my jacket <laughs> shrunk. Sure. Sure. I think it was a little small. I think you stopped. Anyway, oh, oh, that's a cute picture. There I am. Another picture. That was a good one. You can see his bumper sticker. He rocked that bumper sticker all over the place. Cute. Oh, there's the big there's hug candy. from Candy. Look at her. Oh, I love that picture. What? That's the park owner. She's the owner there. right there. She was, she was nice. Very nice. More campaign events. Anyway, just kind of wanted to give you guys a little background that we were involved in politics. Kind of heavy in 2016. We would go to different restaurants. We would go to the fair. We would have booths all over the place. We did. We're pretty active. We we're pretty active. I'm pretty old now. Uh, this is my daughter. Dr. Carson shared a picture of my daughter on his page. And look at, here's another thing. Yeah, yeah he shared this picture. You can see it's his page. And he was, said he was honored to be her yeah. first candidate to vote for. And she was 18. Yep. So that's pretty I'm cool. I'm 18, my first yeah. presidential election. Yeah. There is our first time in politics. And then what happened was, um, well, I didn't share that picture, but um, obviously Trump won in the primary in 2016. Yeah, Dr. Carson went through. Dr. Carson endorsed him. And at the beginning, I kind of wasn't thrilled with Trump, you know? I was on the Trump train first. Yeah, he was on the Trump train first. I was not because I was still, um, like a lot of people, thinking not loving how he spoke and stuff like that. Well, now I, I don't care. But back then I was used to Dr. Carson who carries himself a lot differently as a you know Christian man. And he just speaks totally different. He's super nice. But when, when Dr. Carson said that he knew Trump personally and he endorsed him fully, then I trusted Dr. Carson. And I also then finally took a while, <laughs> decided I liked Trump. Well, I mean, was it the fact that you, I think it was less Dr. Carson's um, opinion of, of uh, President Trump. And I, obviously I think it was more my opinion. <laughs> sure. I mean, I, I think that's fair. Yeah, sure. I don't have, like, I don't have my own opinion. Oh, you've got plenty of that. <laughs> Anyway, and then when Dr. Carson became part of his administration as the HUD secretary, yep. I was all on board. And then um, people have asked Dr. Carson since, would he be a member when um, there were talks of Trump considering him as VP this year, but Dr. Carson straight up told Trump and everybody he wasn't interested in, um, he said he would do anything to help, but he didn't want a position like that in government. Um, he may be in a different role, but he did not want to be vice president. He wasn't into that. So uh, it's a smart man. Yeah, he just he he wants to have fun in the rest of his life and stuff, and doesn't want such a serious um, time constraint. He's got grandkids and stuff. Stress. But, yeah, and, and under a microscope. And he's already been a neurosurgeon. Jeez, yeah, that's a stressful job. It's just not where I would want to be. He only ran because 
everybody pressured him to in the primaries. He's even said that, that, um, and he's very proud to be part of Trump's administration and, you know, be friends with president Trump. But yeah, he's not interested in a, in a, a government job, not a job like that. He said he would be compelled to help if, um, Trump needed him, but we shall see anyway, moving on to everybody needs to get out to vote tomorrow. And even if you're voting for somebody else, it's, you know, we need, everybody needs to, you, you know, take part. What you say? No, don't vote for anybody else. I didn't say a word. He <laughs> shook his head. No. Anyway, let's talk about, the popular vote versus the electoral college because you know there's people that always say oh it should be popular vote we shouldn't have the electoral college what do you mm -hmm. say to that i say you're silly no i the founding fathers were smart enough to create a, a system that warded off mob rule. Uh, uh, the, the Electoral College provides representation both by population as would a, a, a direct democracy would, where one person, one vote. But it also provides equal representation for the individual states. So that a rural farm type state, let's take um, Kansas, wheat fields, uh, the Great Plains, the prairie lands. It has as a state the same representation that the state of California does, the most populous state in the country. So they they were the founding fathers balanced those those tributes it's it's similar i think as to why we have a house and a senate in our uh, our congress our congress is bicameral it consists of a house and the senate house representing the population senate representing the two senators for every state it prevents uh, you know, mob rule. That's why the electoral college is in there. So like, for example, we live in California and we live in a conservative area of California, but we all know California is blue and populated heavily. So we could take over the whole country, basically our communist. Yeah. So we could literally, I mean, if we didn't have the electoral college and it was popular vote, you, you you would basically keep the whole country blue all the time. Well, California can't do it on its own. But I mean, with the other populated, like New York yeah. and, you know, the big cities are all highly populated. So and the big cities have something in common. They're typically the blue. The electoral college representatives, the delegates, are dependent on the number of representatives you have in the House. So we have 53 districts now. We lost one last election or last census. So now we have 53 representatives, 54 and 55 representatives with their two senators. That makes sense? Yeah. So those 55 delegates in, in the electoral college, I mean, we're the most populous state in the, in the country. So we have the most delegates in the electoral college. And if you combine that with New York. And then Chicago and all the highly. Well, Illinois has. Populated. I don't know what they, how what do they have, 14? I'm just saying by popular vote. Oh. Every oh, yeah. big city has, it's typically blue. Your, yeah, your electoral college re reflects your population and then your two senators. 
So that's why we ha it's important to keep the electoral college, yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, I think it's absolutely. It's like saying, let's just get rid of the, the United States Senate and do everything with the House of Representatives. It's silly. We, um, we do not have a direct democracy. We never have. The founding fathers could look back on, on historical uh, events and see where direct democracies fail. Kind of Greece comes to mind. But yeah, they were able to crap because the United States was a, 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 a an original idea, a concept to create a country. It, it wasn't derived from a monarch. They simply said, what do you think if we did this? And then to prevent any you know bad thing for happening, we did this and we did that. And the, these dudes got together and said, "Man, that, that that's a pretty good idea. Let's let's run with that, but let's leave enough ambiguity because you know, shtick happens and things change." Well, let's talk about what people should be voting for, as far as um, you know, how people are can tend to be emotional, especially women. Although, huh? although I'm not one of them, I don't vote on um, emotion or I don't care about that stuff. Or one issue, you know, a lot of people are one issue voters. No, um, how people should look at all the different things affecting the world. Well, the country, not the world, but the country. And like, like make a list of pros and cons. And of course you won't agree on every single thing with a no. party, but you need to align yourself with the party that best represents you. And how it's easy to do that by making pros and cons and who you, what you believe and not just voting on one thing or, Oh, Don't somebody's hurting my fe feelings or he said something like this or whatever. But so you should, in my opinion, you should be well-rounded voter and look at all the different issues, make a big list pros and cons and such, because what's important most important to you is and me is border and economy right those are your main issues yeah they're they're up there i think the general trend the general the overall direction in the united states is what scares me we have had 200 near 250 years of, of success uh honey the camera's up there yeah i know i'm looking at my hand here right there i got a boo-boo we've had nearly 250 years of success and there is a uh, uh what's the word a poll or this loud this annoying political voice from this side and I'm shaking my left hand uh, to go to make us somehow more socialistic more um, communist communists. okay stop you're gonna get us flagged but yeah I I, I, don't, I don't like it I just don't but I'm saying voting. We we're talking about issues yeah. to vote on. So more uh like my main thing is can we afford to pay our bills? Can people exactly. afford to buy food? Can people pay for their gas? In the old when the, when this nation was founded, debt, national debt was seen as a bad thing. And it makes sense. Now yeah. both both parties are guilty of that. Right. But one much more so than the other. I don't like either one of them spending more money than we than we have. But those are number games that Washington, D.C. likes to play. Well, for instance, though, we live in California where everything's the most expensive. Crazy. Yeah. it's. And if we didn't have this home base that's paid off, I'm sure we probably wouldn't live in this state or pick this state. No, we'd have a new cardboard box. <laughs> Somewhere else. 
<laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> Sorry, my eyes twitching. Anyway, um, because we have the most taxes, they're even tax my medical retirement like big time. It's crazy. Um, but so that's another thing. Taxes should be on your list. <laughs> I mean, do you want more taxes or not? That should be people's priority. So, and the answer to that is no, you do not want more taxes. Good Lord. This country brought in more revenue than ever before. More revenue than ever before. It, how much is enough? Mm, mm, mm. I know. Don't get him started on that. Or inflation. That's one of the things he'll go on and on about. He'll talk, talk about inflation. Stop printing the money. He hates it. He goes on Get and on. Get back on a gold standard. <laughs> okay, fine. You don't want to do gold? Get back on some type of tangible asset Maybe we should standard. trade spices like in the old days. Hey! <laughs> spices. I'm investing in saffron. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, another big one for you, because you actually work this job, so you have a lot of information that others don't, is the border. Mm. It, that's a, that's a, heart, a heartbreak right there, man. Because he actually worked for the U.S. Border Patrol. And you know, the worst part about it was we can stop it, period. It, 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 you can bring that to a stop. If you want to, if if the, if the person behind the old desk wants to stop it, they stop it right now. It's that simple. There's no. Uh, what was the? Oh, what was the uh, the 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 reason they were using during COVID? Title forty two. Yeah, but Title forty two is great. It, it, it is a, a reason. But 212F provides basically blanket authority, plenary authority to the chief executive. And uh, by now you're not making sense for regular people. No, like coding codes and stuff. So just so under when COVID was here, there's a health and there's a health and safety code for immigration, Title 42, that if you have community communicable disease or 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 represent some type of health threat right it was COVID, so boom immigration was got shut down hard and that started under president trump or former president trump and then um the biden administration kept it going but when it came to an end because that title 42 is temporary they reversed they, all of Dr. They Trump's everything. executive orders on immigration. Where, where, even though I should say, even though the previous administration under former President Trump had an international agreement with Mexico, the Migrant Protection Protocol, where asylum seekers, illegal entrants, or anyone else was going to wait. In Mexico, as their cases were processed, that when they uh, when the President Biden reversed that order, bro, and then the wording of President Biden's um, immigration stance was very encouraging to those uh, wanting to seek entry regardless of the the means and then them giving tons of benefits to people encourage encourage more. more so and then of course my my one of my um big issues with it is the people we don't know about the bad people that have snuck in we know there are there there's murderers we know about 13,000 no of them vetting. There is no vetting. And the U.S. Border Patrol quoted just like a, a couple weeks ago or last week, something like 200 terrorists are in the country. So Known. Known. 
That doesn't count the ones that they haven't. That snuck in in the middle of the night. And 13,000 murderers we know they know about that are free in the country. People are getting murdered and stuff. And how is there no vetting? How can you do that? Like, I don't understand. Like, it hurts my soul to think about to think about that. And my, my own kids want, you know, and grandkids on this, you know, going around and all these people are just there, out there. And why is that okay? My mother immigrated to this country. One of the proudest moments of my life was watching her naturalization ceremony. And uh, my grandparents, they all immigrated. They went, they left Indonesia. I went to Holland for a bugs kid. They went from Indonesia to Holland to the US. And uh, you know, it, it's a very cool thing. And my grandmother told me one time when I was a kid how that it took like nine years or something to get here. But they did that. And the idea that you just flood the southern border and this White House gives you a, a parole status, it, a parole entry status. There's no... And a card and a, place, and a place to live and a car. <laughs> a lot of these, you know, the ones that they grant asylum you to. You cannot vet somebody coming from a foreign country in mass with any with with any effectiveness so you if just, you're there at the border when you were border patrol and 200 people all came to you like what would you, what would you do or what do they what's the new policy like what would they have you do back in uh, the late 90s we you'd put them all down on the ground you order them down and they take a bus or you call in a bus if you can get a bus to where you were and um, they process them. We fingerprint, photograph, take all the biographical information we can. Um, and then they were, they're given the opportunity to VR voluntary return, or if they wanted to, uh, they could apply for asylum status refugee, but you tell them right off the bat, Look, man, 99.9% .9 of you are not going to qualify for uh, asylum. Economics is not uh, an asylum category. Unless you're being persecuted for your religion or your politics, you're not an asylum category. There's no... Uh, so just wanting a better life is not a category for not. these people. Think about what's the population of the earth right now. Uh, I don't know. I have no 12 idea. billion people. How many of those 12 billion would like to be in the U.S. for a better life? You can't do it. So that's why we have a system. I know people like to say the system's broken, but being overwhelmed is not broken. Well, you can't even go. I can't even go to Mexico because I don't have a passport. They're not going to let me just go into their country yes, and just be like, but I mean, to live there and just go in and just be like, except in Canada or anywhere else that you go and say it without a process. I'm saying without applying, you just you can go visit. Yeah. But like you can't go to Canada and just walk right over and say, I'm going to live here from now on without well, some kind of visa or something. Well, you could, but you'd be at the risk of deportation. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. legally, you can't just go to another country and just say you're going to stay without any paperwork or anything. Yeah. Because then you'd be getting deported from their country. If they enforce the the immigration law. I know, but most countries, countries do. I'm just saying I, we don't. I'm saying other countries. You stand the risk of deportation. So... But what was this? Oh yeah, immigration on, on, on the in the election is a is a an important one to a lot of people and it should be as well it should be. Well, do you think because I think there's something nefarious going on with the amount they're letting in 
and um, how they're letting them in and where they're placing them as far as swing states and the future status. So if they, them. yeah, so if they give them citizenship, no. So the conspiracy theory. It's not just conspiracy theory, okay, by the way. Just, Go ahead. So there's a conspiracy theory saying that says, in a nutshell, these are all future voters and they're being put in conservative locations to increase the population so that when the next census comes about, uh, hopefully they are liberal Democrat voters. Right. I mean, well, if they get a path to citizenship somehow by the government, I, it's a it's yes or no. Right. That's yes. That's the that's the fear. But to do that, you have to have a path to citizenship, which I think is absolute garbage. If you want to do asylum or what was the one under Obama? DACA. OK, but. There does not have to be a route to citizenship. I know, but I'm saying that that's what they want, the Democrats. Yes. That that's yeah, that's the theory. They want to place people in especially swing states and give them a path to citizenship so they can eventually vote. Yeah. And because they've given them so many handouts and they're the ones that let them in then they're hoping 70% would vote Democrat. And then every swing state would be, because it- To alter the the the, the, uh, the voting trend. And yeah. The, and the- Because if it's a close election like last time and you're only separated by say 80,000 votes, yeah. but you've let in 10 million people. And so 70% of those 10 million, if they were to vote Democrat, think about it, you would, you would keep the elections blue all, all the time is what they is what everybody's saying including Elon Musk who's one of the smartest men on the planet that's what he thinks is going on well I'm smarter than Elon Musk. <laughs> just saying I'm just saying, saying that there there's there's some shady stuff that's going on and that there's probably reasons not just their heart going oh we feel sorry for these people do you really think that that's it i i <laughs> Let me be, I'm going to try to be diplomatic. <laughs> I find it very difficult to believe this is an altruistic, philanthropic, not political power situation. That all of this, this entire scenario is just a matter of coincidence. I. <laughs> I was going to say, you're probably a nicer person than me yeah, because I don't trying, think right. that. I don't think that at all. Because it's just. It doesn't make sense why you would want in 10 million extra people. And use the an immigration parole system, which is which has only been used on a case by case basis for humanitarian situations. I know a fellow or two. Who are illegal aliens? They're nice guys. They're they do good work, but the fact is, they're not legal. Uh, 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 not citizens, but uh, they are not legal residents in the United States. And nobody's against immigration and because I, you were your family was an was definitely migrated here. Yeah, yeah. But, I don't, I don't, and I don't care about their legal status. I'm retired. I don't. It, it ain't my thing. Um, but they needed to go to their country of origin because their mother was passing away. She literally had stage four cancer. They approached immigration. Immigration said, "Fine." They they left and were allowed to come back in on, on parole. So. They had been here 15 years. They'd never had a, so much as a traffic ticket. They'd had jobs the whole time, tax paying jobs. So the immigration said, yeah, okay, on a case by case basis, we'll, we'll grant this parole. 
and they allowed them to come back in. Okay, wait, how did they pay taxes if they weren't illegal? With an EIN, employee identification number. It's not a quote-unquote social security number. It's an EIN. But So they went out, they came back in. But you cannot do that uh, in mass. You can't do that for millions of people. And okay, let's talk about the bill that everybody keeps saying that even though Trump wasn't in power, he squashed um, that um, that Harris keeps saying the whole time that you know this is all caused by Trump because they had a bipartisan bill, blah blah blah. Border Secure Act or something. But but if you look at that bill, actually, <laughs> it granted it, it granted um, there was an amnesty amnesty to program a, in it in it and billions of dollars going to. Ukraine. Different. Yeah. I mean, shit that had absolutely nothing to do with the border or immigration. Uh, Don't they call that pork when they add a bunch of stuff yeah. to a bill and they try pork. to add it? They add a bunch of stuff to a bill that has nothing to do with the bill. Your remarks. Yeah. And that's how they try to get things through. But what happened with that bill, from my own reading, is yeah, they have, were going to have to let in. Two million, at least two million a year, and give them amnesty. Yeah, it. I do. It's. I find it one. I find it hard to understand how you can. How you can argue that that was a good bill, where HR, the pre, the bill prior to that, was it HR two. What year was HR two? One year before. So 22? Yeah. So 20. He was like a 20. We went to do. I believe so. I found my phone here. I had to look at it real quick. But yeah. Anyway, there was a bill the prior year to this the one. Republican House put forward HR1, HR2, uh, where, I mean, hey, it was a great bill. Would have strengthened up the border. And it did not provide superfluous funding for Ukraine, for whatever other projects they want to put in that were not directly related to the border. And but but not one blue congressman was supported. And there's the, and they like to say this last one last year was bipartisan, but it had more net. It was only a few people. Yeah, it was barely bipartisan. Barely bipartisan, and the only reason um, they like the bill, or some people like the bill, is because there was money in it for more border patrol agents or something. Don't give me a bill for. 700 and billion dollars and ten dollars of that goes to the border yeah and then call it an immigration bill don't do that so that's the real story on that bill don't listen to the media where they leave all of that out and tell you none of it and just say trump squashed it even though he wasn't even in office yeah if that's the case, if you're going to say someone not in government quashed this bill, then that means your party sucks. I know they couldn't even get it through with yeah. somebody. If, you, if your if your party can't pass a bill because somebody outside government said no, then that then that bill sucked. That's that's all there is to that. What you what, what next? What do you? Well, is there it looks like other... you're, I'm, you're contemplating some. No, I was just trying to think of what other issues. I mean, for you, Second Amendment's big. Yeah. And um, so you that's another reason you you like the are more on the side of the Republican Party, right? 
because they're always trying to take away Second Amendment rights and stuff. You, well, the way you worded that on the side of the Republicans, I'm on the side of, of the Constitution. Yeah. So Sorry. when when there's a tragic death of someone, it, it is absolutely tragic. But I cannot help but look down the road farther and see that the 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 purposeful, the intentional, the primary reason for the Second Amendment is to deter the tyrannical government to pre to to prevent government from becoming a tyrannical SOB that in the words of the declaration say uh, should be abolished and overdone, overthrown. Plus, how in the world are they going to get rid of all of the guns in the bad guys' they hands? Never will. That's another thing. If they get rid of citizens having guns, they, they still won't. can't get rid of all the bad guys and the gangs with the guns. Like, really, you want all the gangs and bad people to ha be the only ones with guns? Yeah, the, the bumper sticker. I remember the bumper sticker from, God, I don't know, I must have been eight years old. If guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. I mean, it, it honestly, it, sometimes, it seems cliche, but drugs are a great example. Cocaine and fentanyl and methamphetamine, they're all outlawed, so obviously there is none, right? Right, right. And obviously they don't cause a problem, right? Yeah, and also, like, we live in a very rural area, so if you call 911, I mean, how do you, you might not get somebody there to defend yourself, you know what I mean? You you have to defend yourself sometimes when you live in very rural areas because the police don't always get there quickly. I mean, here we have better response, but there's a lot of very rural towns and stuff where your police won't get there in 10 minutes. You know what I mean? You, you have to be able to defend yourself. They're not always able yeah. to respond quickly. I get, I have the distinct opinion that if, 911 is called from where I'm at. It's not going to be me calling. It'll be the SOB trying to break into my house. <laughs> saying, get this fat wheelchair guy off me. He's killing me. <laughs> That's funny. Please save me. Hilarious. I could just, just picture, I'm picturing this too in my head as we're talking. That's pretty fat, funny. This ain't the trail you want to ride, cowboy. Okay, I have another thing to talk about. Um, we've seen already seen some cases. I know people want to say this never happens. Oh, God, it never happens. But it does happen, and we know it's not perfect. But what about the couple of the cases already that we've seen of, like, voter fraud going on? So voter fraud. So voter, voter fraud, ballot fraud, blah, blah, whatever. It happens in every single election but generally speaking it is so minute but when you find cases of hundreds and then thousands now you've got a concern because it doesn't you don't have to have 100 um 100,000 bogus ballots cast at one polling station. That's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for is just enough to, um, in several precincts, to change the overall outcome. So like that DA in Pennsylvania recently came out with, they had like 2,001 precincts or yeah, something, they, they, right? The, they were claiming 2,500, um, but they had said they had reviewed 
and, and several hundred were going to be legitimate and were put back into the, the count stack. But there were, yeah, there were thousands that were bogus, just bogus. Same handwriting. Different names, different right? Different names, same handwriting, same it's like, date. It's like me signing Tanya Chumley, Derek Chumley, Francis Jackson Chumley, Bob Smith, all, all with my handwriting. Because that's why they have cards with your handwriting or like DMV registrations, if that's the way they do it in your state, where it has a signature that they can match up. So they know, obviously, that isn't your signature. Or if you say you didn't vote, you go to vote, and it says shows that you've already voted, something like that. You could dispute it. But there's been thousands already. So, so what you're looking for is maybe not – hundreds of thousands in one state or one right. precinct or one, one county, precinct. maybe they have, say there's, it's a small precinct and they have 500 here, yeah. a thousand there, 2000 there, and they add up, especially on a close election. Right. So we're not talking about huge amounts of voter fraud, voter fraud overall, but it's specific targeted. Uh, and if you go back, you can see previous, the historical voting of that area, of that precinct, of that region, of that state. You can see the historical votes. And yeah, you, I'm sure somewhere there is a political strategy expert who has all that information and goes, hey, we only need, uh, 400 votes here. Yeah. And everybody has access to voter rolls and yep. stuff. Like it, you can get, get the voter rolls. And, and speaking of voting, so the one that smokes my hand <laughs> is Virginia. Virginia has tried to be had tried to clean up their voting rolls. Oh, the since illegals. Governor Youngkin took office, and it's been a couple of years, and they finally went through and cross-referenced, and they found about sixteen hundred Ill, illegitimate voters on the rolls. So they want to pull them. Somebody sued. Sometimes people move too when they go yeah. to another state. So they're voting twice or something. And then a federal judge ordered them to be put back on. So if you admit to being a non citizen, could be, I mean, and I don't say illegal alien because you could be a non citizen with a legal status in the United States, right? But you still can't vote. No. When my mom first moved here, she had a green card. You have to be a U.S. citizen and take the to citizenship vote. test to, to, to vote. Arguably. There's an argument. that, yeah. But I think it's pretty standard. Only U.S. citizens. That said, if, I just don't understand how, how if you're an illegal alien, you have absolutely no right to vote. But I think that states like California, where they automatically gave them driver's license, I mean, you can get a driver's license, and then at the same time, they register you to vote. I think that's how some people get away with it. I think it's garbage. You know, they they started years ago, and all this, you know, you can get a driver's license in California. And then at the same time, they say, do you want to register to vote? And it says you're not eligible if you're illegal alien in small print. <laughs> but you could say yes and you could get away you could easily get away with it that's what i say they i think they register that way and if nobody's checking little, little box are you a citizen yeah that's it one little box are you a citizen this should be on the census and they can't ask for id here anymore but id to vote like, I got no answers. Put me in charge. I'll fix it in two days. Anyway, we just wanted to 
kind of talk about some um, issues and stuff to do with the election tomorrow. Um, honey, what are you doing? I hurt my hand. I got a splitter right there on my knuckle. Okay, well, we're getting ready to wrap I'm this up. We'll wait a minute. No, just wait. Anyway, we're wrapping up here. We just want to go over some issues that we saw and 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 <laughs> what what irritates the crap out of me are emotional one issue voters. I hope that everybody does their research before they vote and don't just vote on emotion because that drives me, that's to me that's just stupid. It's like it's like I want to wring people's neck when they vote on stupid things. I mean, maybe something's important to you, but there's 10 other issues that are more, you know, very, 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 very important, but you're voting on this one thing. Anyway, that's just my two cents. What do Don't you say? Do it. What do you say? Don't do it. Don't be one issue. Or emotional, straight up hatred. I've seen people, I've lost friendships just over hatred. Literally, wishing trump you know deceased and they yeah. you know all when he got shot at twice or whatever two assassination attempts people actually wanting him saying he caused it he brought it on himself i will not tolerate that crap not tolerate it one bit you say that to no, me should, that, that shouldn't mm -hmm. be that means you're a hateful person everybody. i don't yeah you don't wish that on anybody quit being hateful Kamala Harris is dumber than an oak stump. <laughs> Stop. But I don't wish. But I do not wish. Ill will. Bad. Ill will on her. I don't want her to to win the election. But the idea of someone taking her out is absolutely abhorrent. Yeah, we do not condone that. We don't condone people talking like that or acting that way. Anyway. Oh, and did I tell you that uh, a tree stump can articulate a theory or policy far better than that woman? <laughs> and there's too many word salads that mean nothing. That That's my opinion. Well, let me start with this. <laughs> um, or... I grew up in a middle class family. Well, yeah. so did I. Yeah. So did I, I grew up in a real Canada. I grew up in a real middle class family. Um, but yeah, she went, she was you no, know, don't get me started on her background because I've done a lot of investigation into it. And she barely grew up in the United States, barely. Yeah, I was really surprised to see how how much uh, that, the, that the vast majority of her upbringing was in Canada. Right. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. You're not eligible to run for office. Oh, she was born mind. here, so I she is. That. But no, she, she's Canadian. And, and her family is friggin' rich. They were rich from their countries of origin. They're well off. So it's not like middle class. We're talking upper, upper middle class. If she's middle class. She's upper, upper, upper middle class. We'll put it that way. But whatever. Um, that's it for this episode. I hope that you liked this first pilot of our podcast. And we won't be talking about politics normally. We'll be talking about whatever yeah. is going on in our lives. Uh, and probably more, you know, related disability, you know, van life, you know, stuff that's in our lives every day, stuff like that. But this is just a special because we have the election tomorrow. Anything else you would like to add, sir? If you have ever watched, heard, or hung out with us before, if you would like to see more um, silliness and sarcastic humor and from me you know if if you think i'm a little too subdued uh please let us know well okay here's funny he should uh, funny he should say that because this is 
an idea I had, but I have not run it by him yet. So here we go, right on live on air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I was thinking about an, our, um, as one of our membership perks, after these um, podcasts, we would throw a link up and then we would do a, a like a members only hangout with some with you guys or something like that. So that, um, yeah, you can hang out with us being super silly and stuff like that. And Derek being his crazy self, as you guys know. <laughs> but it needs to be, you know, more private because Derek gets a little, he says some stuff sometimes that YouTube doesn't like. <laughs> anyway, bye, guys. Hey. That's just an idea. Let us know in the comments. Oh, wait, 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 wait. How do you know when a chicken is annoyed? How do you know? Buck, buck them. Buck them. He screamed in their ear. <laughs> anyway, it's been an hour. We're going to get out of here. We love you guys. Um, if the audio sucked, we're sorry. This is our first one. We're trying to get everything, you know ironed out for next time. Hopefully it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see you next week. Bye. <laughs>